my journey as a person has propelled me to ask lots of questions as a matter of fact sometimes i don't even run out of questions to ask so people that knows me personally knows that i am a question bomber <laughs> and one way or the other it has shaped me to who i have become that is why i am delighted to take out this time and create a video for you depending on the kind of questions i've gotten in my dm over time when i applied for commonwealth scholarship i was in a position whereby i asked lots of questions the questions i could not find on the website i had to ask people certain questions and they were kind enough to provide an answer for me that really helped me to put in a competitive um, application so in this video i have 15 common questions that have been very recurrent in my dm and i'm going to provide succinct answers as much as possible to the best of my ability for you out there so i have written out the 15 questions in my notebook yes i'm very diligent i always do that so that we we'll have to miss a point so let's begin the first question here is how can i confirm if my course is an approved program of study so the thing is that every single year the commonwealth um shared scholarship in particular refurbish their programs and they also bring in more schools or remove some schools some schools decide if they want to continue to be a partner with the commonwealth scholarship commission body or if they can sponsor scholars to come and um, school in their university in their institution so how do you confirm if your course is an approved program of study for that particular year i'm shooting this video in 2022 so once you click on the commonwealth scholarship commission website the official application portal once you open the portal you go to eligible courses and schools once you click there you click you see the six teams the six commonwealth teams aligned there once you click each of the team the course is under the team and the schools that are offering the the courses would pop up that is how you can check to know if the course you're applying for for that particular year or for this particular year is among the approved courses for you to put in an application the second question is what level of study or qualification will be eligible for the scholarship? So apparently this scholarship is basically for master student and PhD applicant. So if you have actually completed your um, undergraduate degree and you have your transcript and your certificate or your statement of results in your hand, you are very eligible to apply for this course. Since I'm not a PhD applicant, I cannot say what is required. But I know for sure that it is for masters and PhD applicants. So check out for, um, go to the website and read more about what is required for a PhD applicant. I think it is tailored depending on the school that wants to nominate you. That is the best I know about PhD applicants. So the next question is, do I need NYC certificate to apply for the scholarship? Remember in one of the videos I shoot whereby I differentiated between Commonwealth Master Scholarship and Commonwealth Shared Scholarships. If you are applying for Commonwealth Master Scholarship and you intend to choose Federal Scholarship Board as your nominating body, you would have to have your NYC certificate because it is a criteria, eligibility criteria before you can even apply for the scholarship. However, if you are applying for the Shared Scholarship, nobody is going to ask you that. So you get the difference. If you are applying for the Shared Scholarship, you do not need your NYC certificate to apply for it. If your transcript is ready and your certificate is ready, your school certificate is ready, Go ahead and apply for the scholarship the next question is i have not been accepted into my course yet can i still apply for a scholarship so how this thing works exactly is like this it's always a concurrent application for me it was a concurrent application the time i was um preparing my essays to apply for the scholarship that was also the time i was um preparing my sop to apply for my intended schools that i also wanted to apply for However, there are some certain universities in the Commonwealth partner schools that always state that you cannot apply to any course at all if you have not yet been nominated for the scholarship. So it is in your jurisdiction and your duty to check out what are the conditions of the schools that you intend to apply for. Because this, this, some of the schools state explicitly that you cannot, you are not supposed to apply for admissions if you have not yet been nominated for the scholarship. So that is dependent on that. However, some other schools allow you to apply for the scholarship as and when you are also applying for the admission. You can do the both concurrently. So you don't need to wait for um, admission 
results before you can apply for the scholarship do it concurrently while your scholarship is ongoing you receive your um your state of admission as it is ongoing and all of those things so the next question is if i am already receiving financial support for another source am i eligible to receive a scholarship hmm. first of all before you apply for the scholarship they're going to ask you if you intend to apply for other scholarships and also if you are currently receiving financial support the thing is that you cannot receive financial support from two bodies it is wrong it is not an ethical a good ethical conduct you will be caught and if you are caught your scholarships will be revoked and you pay every penny that they have spent on you up to that point so you have to make it clear are you going to be a commonwealth scholar or you want to do double ends i would advise you not to do that so be clear on the kind of scholarship you want and then go fully at it for you but if you are receiving scholarship from both ends they are going to catch you and when they, once they catch you like i said your scholarship is automatically revoked and every single penny that they have spent on you from the time that they paid for your flight and when you came here they are going to refund every single dime you don't want to put yourself in that situation so focus on one thing all right the number six question is what is the maximum scholarship period okay like i stated earlier the scholarship is for master student as well as it is for phd student and this scholarship is tenable only in the united kingdom and masters taught in the united kingdom is for one year except they're doing masters research but masters taught which is most times what the scholarship body often fund it's a one year program so it is one year program however for phd of course it depends on your school i think it's four or five years so that is the uh, maximum scholarship period that you can have you don't intend to come here and have an extra year don't think about it they are not going to fund you so the number seven question is am i eligible to apply for a scholarship if i am currently residing outside a commonwealth country so at the time you apply for this scholarship they are going to ask you where you are residing they are also going to ask you when was the last time you traveled out of your country and how long did you stay i think um there is a caveat to that if you actually spend more than six months or one year outside of a commonwealth country um, this is what I'm going to advise. If you think you have something to do outside of a commonwealth country and you think it's only for three months, make sure you finish what you have to do and return back to your commonwealth country because when I'm going to book a flight for you, it's going to be from your country of um, residence. That's where they're going to book a, a flight for you. So it is always advisable to be in the commonwealth country when you are applying for the scholarship so that you won't have any reason to lie or whatsoever. You know everything is trackable everything is data so you wouldn't want anything to be held against you or something the next question is is ielts or any english proficiency test elite necessary for applying for the commonwealth scholarships no nobody's going to ask you to submit any english proficiency test for the commonwealth scholarships however where they usually ask for english proficiency it's your school of choice like my school, University of Warwick, demanded an IELTS to show that I can speak and understand English clearly. And I had to write an IELTS. So depending on your school of choice, they will ask you for English proficiency. And also it's dependent on your course. Because there are some people that apply for certain courses in this same University of Warwick and they did not request for IELTS test. So it's dependent on your course, how diverse people are in your course. That's where they will always request you to write IELTS. So, but the scholarship body does not ask you to present any English proficiency. It is only your school that you intend to apply to that requires an English proficiency. So the next question is, what is the age limit for master's and PhD? Apparently, there is no age limit stated in the website. Um, you can be 20 years, you can be 40 years. You can be 50 years, you can be 60 years, as long as you can assimilate, as long as you can apply for the scholarship, as long as you have the will, there is no age limit for the scholarship. So the next question is, what are the mandatory requirements while applying for a Commonwealth scholarship? If I want to start stating the requirements while applying for the Commonwealth scholarship, this video will be too long. That is why I have made a separate video stating the documents that you need when applying for a scholarship the video was well detailed i am going to put the link in this video so that you can check it out a detailed video on the mandatory requirements and other requirements that you need while applying for commonwealth scholarships not just commonwealth scholarship but other scholarships as well 
The next question is, is there an application fee requirement? No, there is no application fee. The, the scholarship is free application. You can put in as many applications as possible and you will not be charged anything for applying. So it is free of charge. There is no application fee whatsoever. And the next question is, is the scholarship fully funded? That is the juicy part. Come on, the scholarship is fully, fully funded. You do not need to stress yourself for the next one year while studying because everything is covered. When I mean everything, I mean everything is covered. Your accommodation is covered, your warm clothing is covered, your feeding is covered, your extra expenses for the month is covered, everything, your flight is covered, everything you can think about is covered, your tuition is covered. You have luxury to all of those things. You even have study grants, you even have research grants as well. So everything is covered, like um, your transportation from your home country down to um, your school country, that's the United Kingdom, and also from the Heathrow airport, airport, depending on the airport that you're arriving. I arrived at the Heathrow airport. So from the Heathrow airport down to Coventry, where my school is located, I also had um, already booked train for me that took me down to Coventry. So everything is, is fully funded. You don't need to spend any single amount of money from your pocket. It is fully funded. It is a juicy part of the scholarship. Everything is fully funded. Okay. So must my referee be academics? No. Um, I remember when I was applying, two of my referees were academic while one was not academic. You can mix it all up. It can be two non-academic and one academic. But I always advise that let it be a mix of both because this scholarship tests your leadership skill, your people skill, and your management skill. It also tests your academic skills and you are coming here to school. So it is always advisable that there are people that can attest to your academic progress, your distinctive academic qualities, not just the one you state by yourself. Are there people to attest to the fact that you were a good student, you were a good teamwork, and you approach your dissertation in good faith and all of those things. So that is why they require two academic reference. I always recommend two academic referees and all of that. I always try to find a balance as much as possible. But if you cannot find two academic reference, make sure that there is at least an academic reference in your application. It will really go a long way to speak volume. Uh, the next question is, must I be a founder of an NGO in the humanitarian sector before I can apply? As a matter of fact, you don't even need to be a founder of anything before you can apply for the scholarship. If in your little sphere um wherever you are whether in academics um, climate change as long as you're solving an sdg potential problem a team member as long as you initiate um prospects initiate works initiate solution you can actually apply for the scholarship the scholarship looks into development impacts solutions as a person what have you been able to do what solution have been have you been able to give to your community even with the limited resources that you have that is what this scholarship looks into first of all before it looks into other things people in my cohort there are so many of them that are not founder of anything so you don't even need to think about founding an ngo or a company or something as long as there is a traceable impact that you have been able to do over the years or over the time that you can, you think if somebody read this, they can see zeal, empathy, passion, impact, vision inside of it, definitely you can apply for this scholarship. So roll out the factor that you need to found something. No, you don't need to. As long as you're doing something sustainable, you can apply for this scholarship. And the last question, but not the least, is what are some of the reasons applicants are unsuccessful? <laughs> that is a full video on its own. And it's not going to be from my perspective alone. I am thinking of bringing a co-scholar into this channel whereby we can dissect on the various reasons why some applicants are always unsuccessful. That way, you will get to your diverse opinion and tell all your applications as the way it is supposed to be. So this is the end of this video. I hope I was able to answer your question. If I have not touched a question that you have in your mind, of course, the comment session is there and it's free of charge. You can drop your question there and I'll be kind enough to attend to the question perhaps by writing it down or by making another video so that I can reach as much people as possible. 
if you found value in this video i think you should subscribe you should like and you should share this video join our community so that this video can reach more people the more you like this video you watch this video and you drop a comment the more people this video tend to reach i hope to see you in my next video where i bring more informative content that will actually help you not just in your application process but also in personal development life ethics and graduate studies Stay blessed till I see you again. Have a wonderful time.